properties. See, the problem is you don't really get the benefit for, like, hardcore with, like, the experience gain until you have three in the set. So I only have enough shit to make one right now. Hmm, do I want to do that? Do I want to waste my brimstone or whatever the hell it is? Okay, yeah, the female dwarves in WoW are an exception, but there's still slutty female dwarves, dwarves in WoW somewhere. I promise you, you can find them. Screw it, we'll make some cane stuff. Oh wow, it's better than the gear I have right now. Yeah, we'll equip that. Equip that all day. 20 experience per, pay, per kill. 10% magic item, fine, that's good. Throw some gems in there. Uh, wait, no, it's the green ones, which I don't have any of. The emeralds that increase my dexterity. Do I have any emeralds hiding in here? Wow, I don't have any emeralds. So, I guess for now we can throw some amethysts in here. Give me some better armor. Nothing wrong with better armor. Nothing wrong with survivability when you're playing in a mode where as soon as you die, that's the end of your character forever. Here we go. Alright, we should be getting close to the Khajra staff here soon. I talk a lot about sequels and remakes uh, benefiting by being able to subvert, subvert the uh, jaded fans' expectations. I talk about it a lot in the Resident Evil remaster streams that I've been doing. Specifically last night I talked a lot about it. Um, but even in sequels, I think it's it's a very cool thing to subvert um, a longtime fan's expectations in a positive way. Um, the uh, what's the what's the example I'm trying to use here? The example I'm trying um, I, I can think of for Diablo specifically is in, if I remember correctly, in Diablo 1 and Diablo 2, you spend the majority of the uh, game, especially the first part of the game, fighting uh, fallen enemies, which are basically like types of imps. And, um, you know, there's two basic types. There's the Fallen, there's the regular Fallen, then there's the Fallen Shaman that can't resurrect the other Fallen, um, which is a cool gameplay mechanic. But I fully expected when I got into this in the very beginning to be fighting zombies and Fallen. And you don't run into the Fallen at all in the first act. In fact, you don't see them until the third act. So they subvert your expectations by not giving you the enemies you expect to fight right away which is very cool, and then they once again subvert your expectations, because at that point, personally, when I saw that, I'm like, oh, I guess they didn't put the Fallen in this game. Well, okay, that's, uh, that's whatever, and then later I'm thinking, oh, that's kind of lame, I actually like fighting the Fallen. And then they show up in the third act, and not only do they show up, but they've been expanded, there's, like, four or five different types now, as opposed to just the two. Uh, the two types that were in the first two games, and it's like, wow, this is this is a really cool way to, you know, give the fans what they want while still changing things up a lot. Ooh, treasure goblin. Let's see, before I fight the treasure goblin here, I am going to look at the chat. Is there some sort of memorial or tombstone on the menu for every hardcore character you have lost? Uh, the way it works is if you go to your character select menu, as long as you have not... Um, as long as you have not deleted the character, the character will always be in your character select menu as a sad, super sad ghost. Uh, we gotta get him. We gotta kill the treasure goblin. That's another fun little thing they... Oh, let me pick up the stuff. Oh, I gotta get out of here. There is poison fields everywhere. I had so much trouble with those poison fields the first time I played through the game. Because uh, I was playing as the witch doctor, but for
for some reason I was still just standing in it like I wasn't my micro wasn't too good and I was just basically standing there taking it and taking the damage fields and then wondering why the fuck am I dying god damn it or like I would be playing on a high difficulty and I would run through it and then you know basically wither and die in you know a fraction of a second that was never fun so now that I'm more aware of being defensive as opposed to being offensive in this game. Let's see, I need to find the Kowser Staff, so... I don't think I need to go down there. No, the Kowser Staff is attached to a thing. Right? Yeah, it's attached to a thing somewhere here in the level, so I don't have to worry about actually getting down there or going through a dungeon yet. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure if this was PC, there would be some sort of memorial area uh, to all your lost hardcore characters. Um, in fact, it probably wouldn't even be that difficult to implement in the uh, in the console version, just because the only reason I think it wouldn't be too difficult is just because of the memorial room in uh, XCOM: Enemy Unknown. Um, which had a great memorial section for, you know, all the characters you effed up and lost uh, throughout the course of your game. God, that was such a good game. I really wanted to do, I wanted to do a as full as possible LP of that game um, on the original difficulty, but I wanted to have a twist with it. Um, where I wanted to have a twist with it where two people were playing the game Shit, I must have completely passed it. I wanted to have a twist where two people were playing the game. One person was playing the base management portion of it, and the other person was playing the missions. And the person who was playing the missions didn't know what the base manager was doing. And didn't know... You know, only really found out, like, mission briefings and stuff like that. Like, didn't really get the bigger picture. And I wanted to... I wanted to... to do that to see how it affected um, how it affected basically the character running all the ops because that's kind of how the military is is run to an extent and I thought that would be a really funny really interesting way to kind of change up the you know the typical let's play formula uh, and I eventually decided against it one because that would that would devolve fast into just, and I mean, I don't think it would devolve in a fun way. You know what I mean? Where it's like, oh shit, everybody's died, I've lost a million missions, and you're giving me a performance review where you're just shitting on me the whole time. What the fuck is wrong with you? And the base manager's just like, hey, we gotta think about the money, and you better bring back more money, and blah, 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 blah. I don't know. It might be something to try later on down the road, but... I don't know. I don't think YouTube's ready for that style of Let's Play. Then again, I'm sure, you know, I just mentioned it, so someone on the internet's done it already. Man, where's this fucking staff? Where is it? I need the staff. serious damage there for a second. I mean, nothing I can't heal, but it's still, it's always very disconcerting and kind of nerve-wracking to see your hardcore character take any damage whatsoever. Yeah, break them down. Break the walls down! Wow, that was uh, dumb of me. Hey, I found it. Oh wow, I can't vault, I can't vault. I don't have enough discipline. 
That is the name for the resource, right? Yeah, it's hatred and discipline. Those are the two. Those are the two good ones. Let's get rid of you, and then we're gonna trigger that and have a big fight, and that will be it for now. All right, that guy's burnt through. Karanya's lost wagon. I right, got the thing I need. And now this is where everything goes to shit. Not for me, for them, because, you know, I have rapid-fire arrows. The Demon Hunter is definitely a much cooler take on the, uh, ranged weapon-like arrow user, as opposed to the Amazon from Diablo 2. That was kind of... That was kind of lame, honestly. Like, the Amazon had some really good skills and was really good in parties, but on its own, it just seemed like such a bummer to play. You know, you already have enough shit to manage in that game. I don't want to, I don't want to be sitting there managing, you know, ammo and shit like that. That just is annoying. So remixing it into a demon hunter in this game and, you know, not giving it any ammo whatsoever or anything like that, it's a really cool way to kind of turn the, the, you know, archer archetype on its head. I really liked it. It's definitely a good decision on the, on the part of the uh, designers. Alright, so we have the staff. At that point we're supposed to approach the Khazar Barricade, but at this point we are going to end the stream here. Hey, thanks everybody who tuned in and uh, stuck through the stream with me here. We didn't die this time, which means we get to live on for another stream. Um... If uh, you give me a follow, it'll let you know whenever I'm streaming new stuff. Um, we do all sorts of different games. I stream Monday through Friday, 9.30 a.m. and p.m. Um, all sorts of different games. I think I did Ori in the Blind Forest earlier today. Uh, I like to do Resident Evil and, you know, some horror games at night sometimes. Uh, we have a lot of fun here. Uh, you can catch all the uh, all the previous streams chopped up into nice edible 15-minute segments. Thank you, Twitch TV, over at uh, YouTube at my YouTube page. It's the same name, Wu Tang Chicken. Um, if you like the stuff that we got on here, we actually do full LPs in uh, 1080p resolution there as well. So you can check those out. We're currently doing uh, Dark Souls, Far Cry 2, Zone of the Enders, a bunch of cool games. Um, but there's plenty of content to check out over there over there as well um, if you're jonesing for more Wu-Tang Chicken. Uh, once again, thanks guys for tuning in, and I will hope I will catch you next time.